Richard, the reason I wanted to talk to you so badly today is because we have seen debt capital markets open back up. It was like all clear, no more recession, everything is fine, borrowing costs are peaking, and now you have this. How does this change the story? I think it only has a marginal impact. I don't think, I don't think it changes the story dramatically. Look, I, I don't think this is a complete surprise to anyone, right? Like, I think Fitch had actually uh, signaled that they were thinking about doing this earlier this year when we had the standoff about the debt ceiling. And so I, I do, you know, obviously it's had an impact on Treasuries. You know, I, can't, I don't know that it's 100% related to this. You know, the fact that the Treasury came out and said that they were increasing the size of the auction had an impact as well. Um, so I don't think this is completely surprised. It's clearly a little bit of a hiccup. People are going to have to process it. It clearly takes borrowing costs up. But, you know, there's so much liquidity out there. There is a real sense that the markets continue to, to be attractive, that inflation is under control, that any type of recession we have is going to be, you know, modest. So I think, it, it, again, it's a small hiccup. But I don't think it really derails what is right now mostly a, you know, a pretty benign environment for credit. Now, another part of this is this idea that there are a number of corporations currently standing that are rated above the United States' rating by Fitch. And you have a number of them also at the same kind of group of ratings. What does this mean for anything that is rated above or at the same level as the United States, given this idea that it's... I mean, can you even be worth more than or rated more highly than the sovereign that you're housed in? Well, what's, it, what's interesting, well, first of all, the, you know, the bad news is that it's a very small group of companies that have ratings at or above, you know, the current sovereign ratings for the U.S. government, right? The, the only AAA companies we have right now are Johnson & Johnson and Microsoft, right? The, we have a, a handful of others that are AA rated. Um, so it's a really small universe. Uh, I do think those companies benefit. Because I think if you look back, you know, a few years ago when we had the European sovereign crisis, what you saw there is a number of investors replaced sovereigns in their portfolio with multinational safe corporates. And I think you could see a little bit of that happen here as well. Unfortunately, the, the, the group of companies is small enough that uh, you can't, you know, there's only so much you can do, right? There's only so much of your portfolio that you can replace um, out of sovereigns into these multinational, highly rated corporates. But I do think there'll be some of that. Uh, what's interesting is even the, the companies that are rated higher than the U.S. government trade at yield spreads above the U.S. government <clears throat> even after the downgrade. So, again, I do think they will benefit. Uh, I wish there were more of them, um, but uh, the small number that are out there will definitely benefit. Uh, and I think they will, they, you could see their spreads tighten to the U.S. government, um, to U.S. Treasuries, but I think they'll continue to uh, trade at a, at a spread, a modest one, but a spread. What about the companies that are riskier? If you're below the U.S. government and you have a perceived uh, riskiness in the United <laughs> States now that didn't exist as much before, does that spell bad news for anything right under double A? Look, I think it absolutely impacts borrowing costs across the board, right? Like there's, you know, if you have this downgrade, if the, if the U.S. government isn't pristine, 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 uh, then that's going to ripple through the entire corporate sector in the U.S. It just has to, right? Like it, there's just no, no question about it. Um, but again, I, I think this downgrade exacerbates a problem we already have, right? The Treasury needs to raise an enormous amount of money. Um, you know, again, as we, you, as the slide you put up there in terms of the size of the auctions coming up, um, that's a lot of money that has to be raised. It's more than has, has been raised in a while. That is going to, you know, government's probably going to have to pay more for that. That's going to then translate into higher costs for, for investment-grade corporates and even higher costs for non-investment-grade corporates. So I think the biggest impact is an increase in borrowing costs. And the question is, um, are those costs so high that some of the, you know, more speculative credits are going to have problems mm -hmm. uh, covering their interest and, and, and staying out of default and maintaining liquidity? 